Good evening everybody. Today I thought we'd have a look at one of the quite popular beginner circuits in the kind of audiophile community which is the uh, Chumoi headphone amplifier. The Chumoi is a very very simple amplifier to build in that it consists of just an op amp driving directly a pair of headphones. The um, op, the Chumoi is usually run off of a DC power supply and a virtual ground is created by these two capacitors and resistors set up as a voltage divider. Now my first thought when I saw this circuit was that it would probably not function too well because most of these op amps generally don't drive low impedance loads that well. So if you hook them up to like a 32 ohm headphones or something like that, I kind of expected to see some kind of distortion. I've got my oscilloscope hooked up to the input as well as my function generator providing a test 1 kilohertz signal and on the output I've got my oscilloscope hooked up. I've also prepared two non-inductive test loads here, a 37 ohm which represents a kind of low impedance headphone, something like your Grados, and a high impedance 330 ohm load which would represent something more like your Sennheiser HD 600s perhaps. At the moment I've got no load connected up at all and I'm running 18 volts so that means our ground is split halfway between that at approximately 9 volts. So let's swap over to the oscilloscope and see what's happening over there. You might have noticed that I'm uh, generating a triangle wave as my test signal and the uh, reason for that is because the human eye is a lot better at detecting whether a edge isn't straight than a sine wave isn't uh, sine wavy enough so the triangle wave can make it a little bit easier for us to just quickly spot any kind of distortion. On my oscilloscope, the blue line here is the input and the yellow is the output. I've got the CMOI set up as its kind of factory default 11 times gain. And you might have seen on the other view here that I've got the amplitude set to 0 0.2 volts on my function generator. So with an 11 times gain, we would expect something to the order of like a 2 volts peak to peak output if the amplifier is working correctly and if you look at peak to peak output voltage here 2.1 volts is pretty much exactly what we'd expect so the first test that we're going to do is to check if the input and the output are exactly the same so a really rough and ready way that we're going to do that is we are going to scale channel 2 down to about one tenth of channel 1, so about 100 millivolt or so. And then we're going to slide it down over the output. And see if they exactly line up. And as kind of expected with no load on there, they match up pretty much exactly. So the first test that I'm going to do is to wind out the 
voltage until we start clipping because there's no load on the circuit at the moment the OPA2134 can swing to about plus or minus one volt of the rail so we'd expect to be able to get to about 16 volts peak to peak without clipping before we uh, run into any kind of problems so Let's start winding this out. We're going past 4 volts peak to peak, no problem so far. Twelve volts peak to peak. Oh, and we just saw some clipping there. So we see clipping at looks like about seventeen volts peak to peak, which is actually a bit closer to the rails than I thought it would get with no load. I haven't scaled the uh, input. So that's basically going off the edge of the crow right now, the blue one, and you can ignore that for the moment. So 17 volts peak to peak. Our triangle wave still looks nice and straight, so we're probably not getting much in the way of distortion. All right, so let's lower the voltage back down to roughly what we had before, and we'll put one of our loads in so I think we'll try our low impedance load first which is a 37 ohm non-inductive load so when we slot this in here we would ideally expect no Change on the output. And we see we lost a tiny bit of voltage, which is to be expected. Ah, but surprisingly it looks like there's pretty much no distortion even at that low and we're putting 3 volts peak to peak into a 37 ohm load let's wind up our input voltage and see if we start oh there we go so we're seeing clipping with the uh, input is now going higher than the output so let's wind that back down I'm gonna say our maximum output voltage is about one 3.7 volt peak to peak and one volt RMS and of course for power calculations we want to use the RMS voltage So let's calculate how much power we're putting out here. One volt squared is obviously going to be one divided by our impedance of 37 ohms gives us 27 milliwatt. So it's not that large, but into our headphones, which are usually very sensitive, something like one milliwatt into a headphone often gives you, say, 95 or 100 decibel or something like that so 27 milliwatt is still 
pretty blistering kind of um, volumes. And I'd imagine that most people would be happy with that unless you've got very low impedance headphones with that are very insensitive, so they'd take a lot of power. Um, while we're here, let's change the signal generator over to a sine wave and we'll take a quick look at the Fourier transform to see if there's any distortion. Looking at that, I'm expecting that we probably won't see anything. So we'll turn on the Fourier transform and at quick glance looks pretty much like there's no harmonics. So to a large degree this amplifier is working a lot better than I thought it would be. I was kind of expecting to be, oh like these are audio files, don't know what they're doing, they're not engineers. The um, op amp shouldn't be driving low impedance inductive loads. It's going to have probably like 2% distortion, but they're too dumb to hear it. But at the moment, it looks like this circuit is actually operating pretty well. So let's swap over to our high impedance load and do another power test. So we'll take our 37 ohm out of there and put in our... 300 ohm load and we'll swap back to our oscilloscope get rid of this stuff go back to channel one let's have no just our output this time and Let's go back to our triangle wave so it's easier to see when the clipping happens. By the way, um, I looked up earlier and the reason that the uh, op amp started clipping at about 2 volts peak to peak into that load is because the OPA2134 has an internal current limit that cuts off hard at 45 milliamp. So we started running into uh, that limiter. I'd imagine if that limiter wasn't there and we started pushing the a different op amp much harder, we might start running into a zone where there's uh, significant distortion driving those low impedance loads, but the OPA2134 and I assume the 2132 seems to handle that quite well. So voltage into our 300 ohm load. Let's start winding it out and see how high we can get. So we've already gone much, much higher than our 2 volts peak to peak into our lower impedance load. 6 volts, 7, 8 volts. 8.8 .8 volts, 9 volts, 11, 12, 12, and we've hit the limit. So let's say the limit is about 14.4 volts peak to peak, and that's about 4 volts RMS. So let's do our power calculation again. 4 volts squared divided by our 330 ohm load gives us 48, we'll call it 50 milliwatt. So it's about 130, 140% more than our 37 ohm load. So but that's still going to be an awful lot into headphones. So seems like you, if you are going to build the Tumor amplifier, it's perhaps slightly more suited to higher impedance 
headphones, uh, especially ones that aren't sensitive where you need to drive a lot of voltage through them to get decent uh, power levels. So, overall, kind of surprised at how well this circuit works. I was expecting a lot more distortion to lower impedance loads. And it looks like if you wanted to build a cheap headphone amplifier because you're not getting enough volume out of your uh, audio device or mobile device, then this is a really easy way to go. Alright, cheers and uh, thanks for watching.